Hello, today I'm sharing some fantastic drugstore dupes for high-end makeup products and some alternatives you may want to check out. I actually love many of these drugstore products more than their high-end counterparts, and I love a good dupes video. It's been a long time since my last one. It was definitely time for another one. I didn't realize how long it had been. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. And let's go ahead and get into these drugstore dupes that I love and think you will too. The high-end version of this drugstore dupe has been discontinued. So not only is this dupe less expensive, it also gives those of you an option who love the original or who like this shade since you can't find the original anymore. I know usually the purpose behind makeup dupes is to give a less expensive duplicate option, but sometimes there are additional reasons and this is one of those times. Benefit blushes have been popular for a really long time. They're buildable, they blend out easily, they're pigmented, flattering, and come in really nice shades and wear well throughout the day. They revamped their line and came out with some new shades, I want to say maybe about a year ago, don't quote me on that, but many staple shades that lots of us loved throughout the years are now gone and you can't get your hands on them. One of those is Benefit California. This was a very popular golden pink shade. It is what is on this side of my face. Benefit blushes now retail for $31. Now my dupe that's on this side of my face, I think looks pretty close. It is $12 depending on where and when you get it because many times drugstore products go on sale or have buy one get one. Actually just yesterday when I was sourcing this and doing the link for you everything I'm sharing today is listed and linked down below. Where I sourced it had buy two get one free from CoverGirl. This is the CoverGirl True Blend So Flushed Blush in the shade Love Me which looks like it has more pink when it's in the pan but when you swatch them and blend them out on the cheeks, they're very close. The Benefit is on top and CoverGirl is on the bottom. The CoverGirl formula is great. It's also flattering and wears well throughout the day and it will save you some money. I'll be sharing my high-end and drugstore lipsticks that I have on a little bit later, but first I wanna share the lip liners that I have on. So the high-end lip liner that's on this side is Lawless Forget the Filler in Pink Sand. It's a nice pinky nude shade. I like the shade. The formula is a pretty basic formula in my opinion. I think I said that back when I reviewed it. It's not one of my favorite lip liners. It just seems kind of basic for the $21 price tag. So my dupe that's on this side is from Koki. It's the shade Natural. I've shared these Koki lip liners on my channel many times because the formula is really creamy. They last a nice amount of time under the lips and they're around $8. And I found so many shades that dupe other shades that I have. They have some nice neutrals. You can get them on Amazon. So the Koki is on top and the Lawless is on the bottom. Now I have had people tell me that they thought Koki was a little bit drying. The only time I've thought that is when I needed to just scribble off the top layer if it's been sitting around for a while. If I do that, I just, I find these to be extremely creamy. I mean, obviously you want to make sure they're not old, but I just, I really love this as a dupe and I actually like the formula of Koki better than Lawless. Now I haven't done an official lengthy review on this concealer yet in one of my concealer roundup videos where I review new concealers and concealers that are new to me for my dry textured over 40 under eyes. I'll have a playlist with those videos linked in my description box and up in a card if you're interested in checking those out after this video. But I needed to go ahead and share it here because it reminds me so much of the Dior Backstage concealer. Every time I used it, it was reminding me of something. I couldn't quite put my finger on it until the other day when I applied this. Now the applicator on Dior Backstage is a little brush applicator, so that is going to be different. But the consistency, the application, the look, the wear, everything else is pretty spot on. Now the shade that I have in the Dior concealer is 2CR. It's a little bit darker than what you're going to see in the dupe. This is a very emollient liquidy concealer that I would say can give 
light to almost light medium coverage. Obviously, you're going to get more if you wear a corrector underneath, which is what I need to do with both of these concealers to counterbalance the discoloration under my eyes. It looks extremely natural and skin-like, and it retails for $32. And my dupe is Physicians Formula Better Glow Concealer. I have the shade Light Medium, which is right here. It's a little bit lighter than the Dior. Dior is what's under this eye, and Physicians Formula is under this eye. My circle under this eye is naturally darker. So I always feel like whatever I'm talking about under this eye always looks a little worse and I am having a bad under eye day. I did not get much sleep last night. So keep that in mind too. They might both look terrible. Under normal circumstances, they both are very hydrating, emollient. They blend out the same and look really flattering. Uh, you may or may not have to set them. I always have to set my under eye concealer just because I crease under my eyes no matter what. The applicator is a sponge tip applicator. So that's a little bit different, but just the way this applies, the way it wears and looks gave me Dior Backstage Concealer in a big way. So I needed to share that in this video. If you haven't tried this, you may want to pick it up. I have seen it retail anywhere from nine to around $12.50. It's a significant savings from Dior. Now this is a dupe that I feel like a lot of people know about, but there may be some people that don't, and that's why I'm sharing it. I kind of forgot about it myself until I pulled out the drugstore version and I thought, God, these are really, really close. And so if you don't know about it, you need to. I'm just gonna share it really, really quickly. The high-end version is the gold standard that has been around forever, Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. It is just such a great eyeshadow primer that you can swipe on with the applicator or with your finger, blend and tap out. It sets down and you can leave it like that or you can set it with powder for even more longevity and to help your eyeshadows blend out easier. It helps your your eyeshadow wear longer and stay crease free throughout the day. It retails for $27. I mean, it'll last you a long time, but I mean, it's still almost $30. So my dupe is the Milani eyeshadow primer. It retails for around $10 and is pretty much identical aside from how it dispenses. It squeezes out of the tube, so you do need to just tap it, blend it out with your finger, but the way it blends out, how it sets down and wears is the exact same. It is the exact same as the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. I swear if I didn't know any different, I would think these were the same. So if you are looking for a less expensive option, you may wanna consider Milani. It's also very flattering. Both of them are for mature eyelids. They don't dry out your eyelid. I just wanted to make that note really quickly. I almost feel bad duping this next product because it's one of my favorite makeup launches this year and one of my favorite lipstick formulas Overall, I have three shades so far. I'll probably get more. They're creamy, hydrating, and have all kinds of nourishing waxes, oils, and other good ingredients to really hydrate and nourish, and yet they wear a decent amount of time. They're really flattering. I could go on and on. They also feel lightweight. That's one more thing. This is the Hourglass Unlocked Satin Cream Lipstick. The shade specifically that's on this side of my lips is Tied. Let me just open this and show it to you really quickly. So that is is what the bullet looks like. And the shade is described as a rosy beige. I think it's more of a beige with a hint of rose to it. And I cannot tell a difference between this side of my lips and this side, which is the dupe. Now the dupe I've shared on my channel many times. I love both the formula and the shade. And I've also shared it as a dupe for other lipstick shades too. This is Milani Color Statement Lipstick in Nude Cream. That is what is on this side of my lips. Although it's a very creamy formula, you can feel a difference when you apply these to your lips. The Hourglass lipstick just slides and glides right on like butter, whereas there's a little bit of a grip to the Milani. It's not a big deal. It's not drying by any means. It's still creamy. It's more of a thicker, creamier feel than the Hourglass, which is a little bit more lightweight. And then when you press your lips together, you can kind of feel that difference, but it's negligible. I'm really splitting hairs. I do notice a little bit more shine with the Hourglass. You probably can't tell because I've been sitting here talking. Now here's what they look like on the back of my hand. I feel like they look identical on my lips though. I haven't found an exact formula dupe for Hourglass where I can find the exact shades and the exact formulas, but this is pretty close. It's good enough for me to recommend it to you if you're really wanting to save money and spend $7 to get a nice 
creamy, rosy, pinky nude versus 38 on an hourglass lipstick, it's still a good formula. I review a lot of foundations here on my channel. I do foundation roundups regularly, just like I talked about the concealer roundups earlier, where I review new foundations and foundations that are new to me. I share my top foundations. I owe you some new top foundations videos, so stay tuned for those in various categories. I have raved about MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation many times on my channel. I'm very picky when it comes to foundations in general, especially powder foundations, because as we get older, our skin gets more finicky. Powder foundations can be very, very tricky. And this is one that is really customizable. It's buildable all the way from light up to full coverage, depending on how you apply it, but it doesn't look heavy. It also doesn't look powdery or emphasize texture. It blurs pores and evens redness. It's really a beautiful powder foundation for all skin types. The shade I have is NC25 on this side of my face. And I don't think it looks like I'm wearing powder foundation. You probably couldn't tell until I just told you. I actually hesitated saying this was even close to a dupe because of how perfect I think this is as a powder foundation, but every time I use Essence 16 hour cover and last powder foundation, I'm always just blown away by how pretty it is. And just like with MAC Studio Fix, how buildable it is from light all the way to full coverage. It is what I have on this side of my face. I can't tell the difference. And I've had them on for a little while. They seem to, as I wear them through the day, settle into my skin at the same rate. They both blur pores beautifully. What is this shade? Classic Vanilla is what I have in the Essence Powder Foundation. They both wear beautifully throughout the day too. That is a struggle that many of us have with powder foundations is finding one that wears well throughout the day, especially if it's hot and humid, that doesn't emphasize dryness or texture or pores. And this is the closest dupe that I have found. The only reason why I'm saying it's not an exact dupe is because it doesn't feel quite as creamy. It looks a little more matte when I first apply it and settles into a more natural finish, whereas this one doesn't do that. But eventually, they just end up in the same place. I think this is a fantastic dupe for MAC Studio Fix. It's such a great price. I shared a powder blush earlier, but I also have a cream blush to share with you that was on my face before before I put on powder foundation. This is Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in Do We Know Her? This is a vibrant peachy coral. This has a powder blush and then a cream blush underneath this plastic protector. It looks like it's gonna be really vibrant and kind of scary, but it blends out to be a really pretty peachy coral shade. The compact retails for $36. My dupe alternative is the e.l.f. Putty Blush in the shade Turks and Caicos. This looks much softer in the pot, but when you blend it out, they actually look fairly similar. Now, I'm calling this an alternative because I think that if you're going for a certain makeup look, either one of these will work. The shade is very similar. The finish is a little bit different though. Do We Know Her has a slight sheen to it, whereas the e.l.f. Putty Blush is a little more matte. If you're topping either one with powder, that may not matter to you. But if you're wanting an alternative, an option that costs $7 versus 36, this can certainly give you a very similar result. It applies the same way and it's really pretty. So I wanted to include it for those of you who like those peachy coral shades like I do. The cream bronzer I have on this side of my face is the luxury Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream in 392 Soleil Tan Medium Bronze. This has been out of stock in a lot of places. I guess everyone is wanting to get their bronze on for the summertime. This is one ounce. You get the same amount here that you get in a normal foundation bottle, but it's a cream product. So you do get a lot of product here for your $50. Here is that medium beige shade. Please excuse my curling iron burn over here. This is a truly elegant formula. It blends out beautifully. It 
always looks naturally sun-kissed. It basically takes no effort whatsoever and it doesn't leave any kind of a film or a sheen. It just looks completely natural. There's a reason why people pay this amount of money for this bronzer, but not everybody wants to. I thought the lighting was too bright when I was applying my bronzer. I don't know if it was when I was applying the Chanel or the dupe. So I turned it down and then I think it made everything look really funny until I went in with my powder foundation that I talked about earlier. So excuse the lighting situation. So I'm gonna share two dupes. And the reason why I'm sharing two is because one, the one I wanted to share is out of stock because I'm pretty sure it's gone viral. It's a great product. It's from Soul Body, a division of ColourPop. This is the shade Medium. Yeah, I think it was designed to be a dupe, honestly, but they do have different shades. So this is the Soul Body Medium. This is the Chanel Medium and it is pretty spot on. It is out of stock, but if you want a lighter shade or a darker shade, they do have those shades available. So I will link it for you if you want to check it out. The bronzer that you're seeing me apply as the dupe is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer in the shade Golden Days. I feel like it looks a little deeper, but on the back of my hand, it's pretty spot on too. So we have the e.l.f. Golden Days Soul Body Medium and then Chanel 392 Medium here. All three blend out easily. They give a very natural result. I can't tell the difference from one side of my face to another. I mean, it was applied underneath my powder foundation on top of bare skin. All three look very similar when you apply them and blend them out. And if you set them, they all wear really well. I would say in terms of longevity and application difference, e.l.f. is the one that is the most different, but it's still a great option. I mean, it's $7. The formula isn't quite as creamy, I guess I would say, as you apply it, but it still blends out super easily and looks beautiful. The end result is really nice. I would say these two are pretty equivalent across the board. So I wanted to give this to you in case you wanted to try it in a different shade or in case this comes back on stock so you can kind of watch it. The Soul Body runs around $15 and it says it has 1.1 ounces in here. It looks smaller but is around the same size. Urban Decay Whiskey is a staple brown eyeliner that I've had in my life for a long time. It's just a nice cream pretty deep chocolate brown. I feel like my pencil is getting a little bit old. And what I like about Urban Decay 24 seven liners is that if your skin is not as taut on your eyelids as it used to be. These glide on easily and give you time to kind of scribble them on. You can kind of be messy with them and then smudge them with a brush. I just find that to be so easy the older I get because precise lines aren't always my friend these days. And these are just, they're easy to work with. And once they set down, they're set the whole day. Did Urban Decay have a price increase? Because I feel like these used to be around 19 or $20 and I'm showing they're 25 now. So I pulled out my ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Sunny Dale. It looks like Sunny Dale is going to be a lighter chocolate brown, a milk chocolate brown, if you will. But it's really pretty much the same, especially once they're on the eye. So we have ColourPop here. We have Urban Decay here. Now this is a retractable pencil, whereas Urban Decay is one that you sharpen. But I also can line with this or scribble with it and be kind of messy, smudge it out and work with it a bit before it sets down. And once it sets down, it is there the whole day. And this is $7. I feel like we have a lot of products in this video that are $7, which makes me really happy, especially when I see subtle price increases that I didn't know happened. I have so many more dupes to share with you. You can check them out here in these videos. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It helps out my channel, helps out my video, and subscribe if you enjoy everyday beauty made easy. That's what my channel's all about. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.